Shalom, and we give all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, Bashim Rokakadash. All right, Yahweh, that's the name of the Heavenly Father, whom the world ignorantly refers to as God. Yahweh Shai, that's the name of the only begotten Son, whom the world ignorantly refers to as Jesus' true name, is Yahweh Shai. All right, and these are the names in which you need to know in order to be delivered out of the nation of Israel. All right, by Shemra Kakadash, right, which means in the name of the Holy Spirit. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of great millstone of rule well. All right, and who has taught us this faith and who has taught us this truth. Okay, Shalom wa Barakim, la Bakarim, which means peace and blessings unto the elect. All right, and Lord's will, this be an edifying video to the sincere believers. All right, I'm going to start out uh, in Revelation. All right, the scripture Apostle Tahar used to bring out all the time, you know, when I was first coming in. All right, and this is, I was meditating on this, on these verses, and that's what's um, the, the topic of this video, man. So this is Revelation chapter 3 and verse, I'm going to start at verse 15. It says, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou were cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, all right, the Lord said he knows thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. All right, because the Lord, would pref he said he would prefer you to be either all the way out of this faith, a wicked person, all right, or you actually to be in this truth on fire. All right, he doesn't want lukewarmness, one foot in, one foot out. All right, so it says, so then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. All right, so if you're lukewarm, if you're half, if you're half budding or half assing, all right, you're not putting forth your best effort. Okay, the Lord said, "What He's going to spew thee out of thy mouth, man." Okay, and that's a fearful thing. All right, and this is an exhortation because the scriptures say, "Exhort one another daily," while it's called the day, man. All right, for us to what examine ourselves whether we be in the faith. All right, because if you if you're deceiving yourself. Okay, you're only doing yourself a disservice. All right, so let's let's get that real quick and uh, let's see. Examine thyself. Um, Salakia, uh, where is that? It slipped my mind. Here we go. Second Corinthians chapter thirteen, and verse five, it says, "Examine yourself, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves." Know ye not your own self, how that Yahweh Shai is in you, except ye be reprobate. So this is something that we have to do hourly, all right, daily, constantly examining our soul, our spirit, and making sure that it's it's uh in the right direction, all right, and that it's on our Lord Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Because if it's not, if our eye is not single, like we just read in Revelation, the Lord said, what He's going to spew us up out of His mouth, all right. And this is a fearful thing, all right. And even the most righteous men. For example, King David, all right, who was a humble man, he even feared that the Lord took the spirit from him, man. So how much more us? All right, so we can't take this gift of faith, this gift of understanding this truth for granted. All right, we have to put forth our best effort. This is Psalms chapter 51 in verse, um, I'm going to start at verse 9 because this is a prayer that King David prayed after he went off. All right. So this is Psalms 51 and 9. It says, hide thy face from my sins and blot out all mine iniquities. And that's what we pray to the Lord for. We pray that the Lord has mercy upon us and he doesn't judge us according to our sins, man. All right. But that the blood of Yahweh Shai be upon us, man, and we be innocent, man, because of our faith in Yahweh Shai. Verse 10, it says, create in me a clean heart, O Most High, and renew a right spirit within me. All right. And that's what we pray for. We pray that we... Be, be transformed by the renewing of our mind, man. Or that, be, that we be new creatures, or reborn, or through understanding this faith and believing in this word. It says, verse 11, here's the point. It says, cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. All right, and this is a prayer that we should be saying, okay, unto the Lord, just as King David uh, prayed this prayer unto the Lord, man. If King David prayed this prayer, how much more? Us that believe in this truth, man, because we're hoping to be of King David's house. Because the Lord said, "What? Well, he's in the last day, he shall raise up 
the tabernacle of David of old, man. So we're hoping to be a part of King David's house, man. The house of David. That's another title for the elect. All right. Now, let's see. Let's go ahead and get... Um, Salak, yeah. It slipped my mind. Here we go. Let me get Hebrews. Um, Hebrews 10. And um, there we go. This is Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 35. It says, Cast not away therefore your confidence, which have great recompense of reward. Now we know that word confidence means with faith, calm meaning with if it then goes back to fide, which means faith. All right, so the scriptures say, cast not your faith, because what? Your faith has a great reward, okay, if you maintain it, if you hold on to it until the end. It says, for you have need of patience, that after you have done the will of the Most High, you might receive the promise, we, meaning we have to suffer. All right, but while we're suffering, if we continue to do the will of the Lord, we're going to receive the promise, all right, which is the kingdom of heaven, man. It says, for yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. All right, and that's that's a, Apostle Paul quoting Habakkuk too, because that's important to, to, to keep in mind. The scriptures say, though it tarry, wait for it, all right, because it will it shall not tarry. All right, so even though it feels like the Lord is 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 taking his time, in actuality, the Lord is moving quickly. All right, that's why we have to remember Second Peter, the third chapter and the eighth verse, all right, that the Lord that the Lord moves on a different time. All right, matter of fact, let's get that real quick. Second Peter 3 and 8. It says, But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. All right, so a thousand years to us is one day unto the Lord, man. So, of course, it might seem like the Lord is moving slowly, but really, in actuality, the Lord is moving quickly. We just have to be patient. And we can't throw, cast away our faith while we suffer and while we're waiting for the Lord, man. All right, Hebrews 10. And let's read uh, 37 again. For a little while, and he that shall come will come, because the Lord is going to come, man. And we and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. So if you get lukewarm, you draw back into the world. The Lord's going to have no, no pleasure in your soul, man. But we are not them, right? Verse 39 says, But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. All right, so we're going to maintain that faith unto the end, and our soul is going to be saved, man. This is Revelation 3 and 3. Remember, therefore, how thou hast received and heard, and hold fast. So remember when you first came in the truth. When you first came in the truth, you were on fire, man. All right, we have to try to emulate that and, and be in that same spirit, man. As the scriptures say, hold fast, meaning to hold firmly, hold tight all right, to our belief. All right, because we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We have all these different spirits, all right, and these people in this world that's trying to get us up out of this faith, man. All right, but what? We're not going to let any man take our crown. It says, and repent. If therefore thou shalt not, thou shalt not watch, I'll come on thee as a thief. And thou shalt not know what hour I'll come upon you. So if you stop watching, you stop doing what you need to do in this in this faith, the Lord's going to come upon you as a thief, man. All right, now let's go ahead and get this. This is Revelation chapter 2 and verse, uh, start at verse 4. It says, Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. See, according to the Holy Scriptures, this truth is our first love, man. All right? And we're not to be like this. We're not to, we're not to forget our first love. Verse 5 says, Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I'll come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. So if you don't, if you don't repent and go back to your first works quickly, the Lord said, Well, he's gonna blow out your candlestick, man. Or he's gonna take the spirit from us. Alright, now let's go ahead and get Revelation 3. This is the exhortation, of course. All right, this is Revelation chapter 3 and verse 11, because I quoted this. It says, Behold, I come quickly. So the Lord is coming quickly. All right, this is all revelation. So this is all prophetic future events that were waiting to, to take place. Red letters, our Lord, Yahweh Shai speaking himself. He said he comes quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, which is this truth, this wisdom, this knowledge. It says that no man take thy crown. Because what? If we hold on to this truth, we're going to be rewarded with the, with the crown of life, man. We're going to be blessed with salvation and immortality and eternity, man. 
all right, and joy forevermore, okay? And things that we can't even fathom within our own mind, like it says in Corinthians, the heart hath not, hath not even perceived the things in which the Lord is prepared for those that love him, man. All right, so now let's go ahead and get Psalms. All right, this is Psalms chapter 137 and verse um, 5. It says, if I forget thee, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget her cunning. So if you forget the Lord, right? The King David said, let thy right hand forget her cunning, meaning let you be useless, man, because most people are right-handed. That's your dominant hand. If you don't have your dominant hand, you're essentially useless. You're, you're not able to work. You're not able to, you know, do anything that you do. All right. Verse six, it says, if I do not remember thee, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. If I prefer not Jerusalem above my chief joy. All right. So the Lord, Jerusalem, this truth is supposed to be preferred over anything that we desire in, in this world, man. All right. Anything that we get pleasure in, this comes first. This comes before everything, man. This is priority num numero uno. All right. And the Lord said, what? If I do not remember thee, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth, man. All right, pretty much, again, you're useless. If you can't speak, if you're dumb, you're essentially useless. All right, that's how important this truth is, man. We have to always keep it on the forefront of our mind. So let me get this and end it on that. This is Matthew chapter 6. And um, 22, it says, The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. So we're supposed to keep our, our mind, our, which is the eye, single. We're supposed to be single-minded and focused towards the ushering in of the kingdom of heaven, which is the passing of this knowledge and teaching it to our fellow brethren. Our right, Lord's will is edifying. Koholo, Yahweh, Bashim, Yahushai, Bashim, Rukal, Kadash, the honors to the apostles and the elders of great mills on the rule well. Shalom, Wabarakim, Laba, Karim. Peace and blessings unto the elect. Shalom.